Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. I am so glad that you're here. Now in today's video, I'm actually gonna share with you a little homestead project that we have on the go. But before we dive into the project, I wanna tell you why it's happening. We are coming up on five years living in uh, the first home that we ever purchased. If you've been following my journey for a long time, you know that our first homestead was rented. And then when the landlord wanted us out, which can always happen um, if you rent. However, I do have a great blog post on the pros and cons of renting your homestead first. And uh, I can link that below because we learned some really valuable lessons. So. It was definitely worth doing because at the time, you know, we weren't able to buy. And, and part of what I want to share with you today is a little bit of what we have experienced in terms of our journey towards self-sufficiency and homesteading. Because I think there's this idea that you need to buy the farm, right? And you, you need to wait for the perfect property or the right amount of land. And if my family and I had done that, uh, the last, oh gosh, how old is kiddo now? The last eight years of our homesteading journey would never have happened. If we were waiting until we could afford just enough land or the right house or this or that, you know, we'd still be sitting waiting. And so part of how we make our journey towards self-sufficiency and homesteading work is by working with what you have. And instead of you know looking at a problem and trying to find a way to make it into something that will actually help you thrive or create a solution. So that's part of the reason of why we're doing our, um, our little project. It's an indoor project that I wanna share with you. Um, and part of the reason we're doing that is because this house isn't perfect. This land is not perfect. Um, I run a business, I homeschool, and there's three of us and we have 1100 square feet total with no basement. We don't have a basement. So that certainly doesn't count as tiny house living, you know, and I'm not, this is not like a poor me. My house is so small, but it's more, how do we make a space that is definitely challenging in terms of all the things that we want to do, all the hobbies that I have. I was going through all my craft drawers. Dear Lord, I have a lot of hobbies. And so when you have stuff and you have a busy life and you homeschool and you do all the things that we do, how do you make a space function? And that's part of what we're doing today. So I'll get to that soon. But one of the main reasons why I really wanted to do this project is this is the longest my husband and I have lived anywhere ever. Isn't that crazy? Now, not counting when I was a child before, you know, and then went off to university. So basically from the age of 18, this is five years is the longest stretch that I have ever lived anywhere. We bounced around for a long time. We lived out West in Victoria, British Columbia for a while. We backpacked through Thailand and Laos. We lived in Korea for a while. And then we bounced around in all these different places. So, and I like, I'm a wanderlust kind of person. I like moving, I like change, I like shifting. And I was getting the itch to move and real estate, like it's not really a good time for us to move, um, to be very transparent. Uh, we're pretty much priced out of the province for what, if we actually wanted to move to something bigger and not go into more debt, right? So instead of moving, starting over, um, especially because I have a great homeschooling community here. I have a great community of women that follow my work and come to women's circles. I have a wonderful community of clients. You don't want to just leave all that, right? Um, we're going to reno and redo a bunch of stuff in the home to make it feel like I have a new space without actually having to do the hassle of moving somewhere else. So one of the biggest problems we have had in this house since day one has been storage. And we really lack in what a lot of people take for granted in their homes as like basic storage needs. Like for example, my son's room is not actually a true bedroom. The people who ran out and gutted this place about 20 years ago converted a, a 1100 square foot, three bedroom, one bath home into a one bedroom with a insanely giant bathroom and a dining room. 
And so my son technically is in the dining room. We did close up the wall and give him a wardrobe, but it doesn't have a closet. And my husband and I have two closets in our bedroom. One of them is all my tinctures. And I don't have a linen closet. I don't have a utility closet. I don't have anything like that. So what you're looking at here is the front door, break our front door. And there, this is our front door closet where we have all of our coats, our winter gear and everything. It's super crammed and kind of ridiculous. And now I'm going to turn the camera around and show you what we're thinking about, what we're planning and how we're going to create more space in a small home so that we can thrive and still really function and move and live in this space uh, efficiently. So getting a bit of a sneak peek of the inside of my home. There is our table where we share meals together. We do all of our homeschooling. Um, I love it because it folds down. Thank you, Ikea. Actually, um, the project is pretty much all from Ikea, which is great. There's our closet, which is too small. And here is what we're hoping to transform into something pretty darn magical. All right. So behind me is this old buffet and hutch that I got from my dad's uncle when he passed away. And it's currently housing all of Spirea's products. And um, you're getting a bit of a, a spoiler or a sneak peek here because I'm going to be doing a major sale soon in the next few weeks, getting rid of all of my inventory and shutting down shop. Um, it's I'll probably do another video about that. So if you want more information as to why that change is happening and why I'm moving in that direction, you can stay tuned. But for that, you know, for that purpose, that's not really, you know, going to be needed anymore. Plus I don't really like this furniture. It makes this corner really dark. What we need is more storage. And so we're going to be creating what we're affectionately calling a mud wall because we don't have enough space to do a mud room. And that's when the journey I'm going to take you on and show you what we're creating. Um, pretty much all the pieces that we got in order to create this are coming from Ikea. So I'll probably do an accompanying blog post as well, listing all the different, um, you know, if you wanted to replicate something like this in your home. Uh, yeah, so I'm really, really excited. We're going to, and that's going to mean that the little closet that I have in the front here is finally going to be where I can store my mop and bucket and my laundry drying rack and my exercise bike and all the things that are literally just hanging out in my bathroom. So the buffet and hutch is completely emptied out. Uh, turns out we're more pack rats than we thought and getting the wall prepped and ready for painting after we have some lunch. Yeah. Yeah, we need food first. So the buffet and hutch are out. It was <laughs> very heavy, very heavy. It's now in the garage and up for free on the local buy sell groups. And now we get to painting. <laughs> Actually, it was really short work because it was really just this wall and then the wall where the fireplace is um, and we started building furniture at two o'clock in the afternoon we took a break for dinner it is now almost 9 30 and we're not done so this is going to be one of those to be continued videos my husband's just anchoring one of the first wardrobes to the wall here um, so that way when the kiddo you know yanks the door open it doesn't come crashing down um, but things are slowly but surely uh, coming together and we're still married. So these are good things. So just in case you forgot what the before picture looked like. Dude. And here is what took, oh gosh, probably 48 hours, um, at least seven hours of Ikea furniture building to put together but we are so happy with the space so let me give you a quick tour like i said i'll do a blog post with all of the ikea furniture that we used so that way if you choose to replicate something like this at home you can so we have two wardrobes because that's what we need 
and uh, essentially what we did is all of our coats are in here. I still needed some storage, so my essential oils are up here, as well as copies of my book. If you don't have that yet, shameless plug, grab yourself a copy. And then we have boots down here and lots of spaces, cubes that we used for things like hats, mitts, and gloves are all here. This bench, each one of these has a cube in it as well that has extra shoes stored in there. So the plan is because it's wicker, it'd be pretty easy to clean out, but we'll make sure that everything's dry before they go in there. Again, up here we have more cubes, more storage. So this is for like our main mitts and hats that we wear all the time. So my husband and I each have one, but because kiddo can't reach his cube yet, he's down over in this wardrobe, which looks very similar. So we've got more cat <laughs> coats and um, things like that stored here. Snow pants up there. And then this is kiddo's bin with his mittens and all that jazz. So what this allowed us to do is take what used to be an old closet where we had everything crammed in here and we've now created like a utility storage area. So I finally don't have to have my exercise bike just floating around in the bathroom, which is where it was. My laundry drying rack no longer lives in the garage. It lives in here. My laundry basket, mop and bucket, and then a few other things that we'll be able to tuck into here. So we're really, really excited for what this has allowed for us in terms of storage. We actually have some extra space, which we didn't have before, which is really exciting. And it now makes this smaller home more workable for our family, which is was exactly the main purpose of this. Um, so again, so I didn't put my family through a move. So thank you so much for joining me on this DIY homestead project. Um, I definitely have the reno bug <laughs> at this point, and we're already talking about some changes we can make to the bathroom to also make it more efficient and maybe give me a linen closet. I don't even know what that feels like. That's really awesome. And I can't, I'm looking at this in the camera and I'm so happy. That's the one thing I didn't mention in the last clip. Like the space just looks really beautiful now and it's not nearly as dark, even though we painted a really dark color. So again, thanks so much for joining me. If you like my content, please um, subscribe to the channel and make sure you get on my email list because that is the absolute best way to stay in touch with me and uh, keep up with my work. And until next time, this is Corrine from Spirea Herbs wishing you health and wellness. Music